remember when I was a small boy and I saw my first one, I thought it was that big, but as a small <laughs> as a small child you have also everything is very big and afterwards I realized it's not that big. But I still like it and and if you catch them you need to be careful because they can give you a nasty bite. Yeah, but Tobia was very harm harmless. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is a winter special. Oh, we have winter now, so I got very excited when uh, Martin knows all the stories because I, I annoyed him with all the emails. <laughs> um, there was one night, it was raining and all the rainbows appeared on, on one of the nights, but very excited, these were all, all males. But then, on few days later, on another place in Diamond Creek, I found the um, female got very excited. Such big ones we don't have pet homes, so I got very, yeah, was like a, I will say, like a wonderland when they have such nice big insects. And I just wanted to compare it with the gold was Eurypsa palida. Well, as I said, well, as you all know, the rain was only occurs in, in late autumn after after heavy rain, and, sorry, <coughs> heavy rains. And that one is very tiny, maybe four to five millimeters. And these ones you can only find between November to February in midwinter when it's very cold and when it's actually no weather for looking for insects. But these have a very interesting biology. They have two generations. One in summer with wind males and females and one winter generation where you have only um, partiogenetic females. And these ones they hatch in winter and then they climb up the oats and then they lay their eggs in the in the cusps and then the cycle starts again. But I just wanted to mention here that even you like insects, you can also look out for insects in winter. You don't need to stop hunting, because you can find mm, nice stuff in any season. But yeah, so this one you can only find in winter. It's very surprising how they do it with the temperatures. So, So this is just a random slide, nothing the <laughs> insect has to just have a break from insects and just have to think of something yeah. other to. Before the talk I went I was running around and was also watching, you can even pet them here in the city centre. So in Pondora they will never allow you to touch them, but here you can easily you can tease them that you have something for them, then they come and then you can pet them. And then they are disappointed that you don't have anything. <laughs> But yeah, I, I really like the possums. Even they make annoying noises at night sometimes, but I really admire them. They look like teddy bears. <laughs> yeah, this is something for the eyes, it's a nice butterflies. The red admiral is the one from home, and it's similar like the one who lives well, living here. They also feed on stinging nettle, and the caterpillars are also building these small houses and feeding them in very similar lifestyle. But Everybody knows the admiral because very common butterfly and very nice one. Yeah, the other ones they don't need to tell a lot, tell a lot about them. Yeah, the imperial hair streak is a very nice one. I got very excited when I saw the needle argus is very common, was everywhere in, in autumn. And the common one looks like I have abused her, but now she was very fine. She even was around three weeks after the photo, it was the same female on the same spot. So and what, what I like about the common brown is it's very endemic for Southern Australia, but it's very common. It even occurs in city centre, it doesn't care. But even it's endemic, it's very common. So that one I, I like a lot about the common brown. So who don't know how it is in Europe if we have some special endemic and then they occur in towns? I have to check about that. <coughs> ah, what I wanted to say is um, I omitted the uh, cabbage white because it's a boring one, so black and white, and you all know it. I saw some colors are much more interesting than the pest species. Oops. Yeah, this is just, uh, as we are, if we have a lot of moss enthusiasts, so this is just, how oh, should I say, a circle of life from the painted under moss. Yeah, I see the female and then the young ones, the old ones, and then the male. Ah, yeah, so the main message for that slide is we also have an Orgia species back home, Orgia antiqua, and I've never seen the adult. I always only saw, have seen the um, caterpillars, and then when I saw these caterpillars on the um, Hahnberger, Hahnberger, what's that? Hahnberger and shrubs, 
in, next to the library, I got excited and I thought, oh, I knew we have the same teams back home, so I knew the females must be doing this, and I was surprised that they have to travel to Australia to see added one of this genus, so, but uh, the rearing was very easy and was a lot of fun. The next time I see the Orgia caterpillars back home, I should also try to rear them to see the added one. Uh, this was one of my main, <laughs> one of my most disturbing insects I had when I came to Australia. I got very excited and started to bake. Baking means you mix red wine or beer with sugar or what, and rotten fruit, and prickle, um, the best is with rotten banana and red wine and sugar, and then you paint it on tree trunks. And back home, you can expect a lot of nice moss or a lot, lot of nice beetles or, uh, or harvestmen or a lot of nice stuff, but here nothing came. And then I got explained last in the last meeting two months ago, just has to do with the ecology that you don't have these fruits or you don't have these bleeding trees with the sugary stuff, so the moths are not evolved to be attracted to rotten stuff. And yeah, very disappointing insight, but yeah, I have learned something. And just in comparison, the light works very well. And then two weeks ago, I had the green lodge moss at my light. It's a very common moss, but I, for me it was one of the most beautiful moss I had at the night. Very, very nice. And that one, the branch, red underwing, is a very rare moss. Back home, and the first time I tried to bake him back home in my yard, that guy appeared and I got very excited. Wow, the first attempt, and then you get something very rare. Was very surprised. And it's a very big one, was maybe that size, very something nice to grab. <coughs> Yeah, actually this slide was for Ray, but unfortunately it's not there today. So just a comparison of the polistis species from back home and from here. So polistis dominula must have been a queen because it was a very early spring when no workers are around. And yeah, the common paper was, I think you all know them, the polistis dominus. But one thing I want, just wanted to mention is that the kings, they have a curved antennas, and as you Probably now the kings they can't sting, so back home I used to, to tease my friends and family to touch wasps and then they get surprised why you would not sting and stung and then said, yeah, these are males, they cannot sting, so yeah. Very nice to tease your family with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, the lifestyle is very similar, just uh, it's nice comparison. Black and white and the black and yellow and brown and yellow. Yeah, this is just I think nothing Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nothing much to say about uh, the maker species, you all know them. Even in Europe they are very famous for their painful sting. So I got very excited when I saw my first ones here. And I also was very happy to feed them a small moss. They are very, very nice predators. I think when they are as big as humans, I think we would have got to extinct very fast. <laughs> and yeah, they jump and so. But I, I did the end slide to um, uh, get to my favorite insect, the ant lion. I have a big obsession with them since I'm a small boy because of these pit bull traps. I, I don't know why I'm so fascinated, but the, uh, only two insects groups are doing that, the ant lions and the warm lions, and very, very nice. And the disappointing thing is, back home, the one species of Malmonioloscus, it's very common in even towns. You can find them at buildings and everywhere. But here, I was checking every building, every corner, no pit bull traps. So, don't know why, but after two weeks, I found I found two tiny pit bull traps under a tree trunk. I was very surprised why they don't appear at buildings like at home. But no, that's nice. And as you see, they can. I don't know. Do they do it here as well? That they can appear very high densities. I have to ask you. Because the pitfall traps I saw here were only single ones, but I think so. They prefer sandy what? soils. Hmm? They prefer sandy soils, hmm? so they tend to occur further up, close to Bendigo. Oh, mm -hmm. and do they appear then also in big densities or not? I have seen them in densities like that, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. are, are you saying that you, you that the larvae and the adults are the same species? Yeah, this is all the same species. Well, I'm very interested in. 
copies of those pictures, please. Hmm? Um, <laughs> I have this book on the hmm? lace wings of Victoria, and I have no, I, there is no antlion species for which I know specifically which larva belongs. Oh, no, no, no. This one, I don't know, I even don't know the genus, and this one, I even don't know what it is. I just... Oh, I thought you said that the... No, yeah, that one. Merged through the same. <coughs> That's the European one. It's the one from back home. Oh, right. This is all the same. Yeah. No, this is from Australia, this... No, no, this is from home. <coughs> and also a very nice sign of spring for me because it starts. It starts of February, they start to build the pit bull traps again, so you may see the pit bull traps in February and now, ah, spring is there. So, no, I really <coughs> like the end line. So, oh, I just, again, a random slide. Uh, this was a very nice found, finding from the Life Group. Why do I think here is the harvestman? Yeah, the second and last spider slide. Okay, it's not a real spider, but just see these fangs, very, very impressive. Yeah. Oh, this, oh yeah, this, now we have some beetles, so it don't take long anymore and then we have to discuss the black ones, but with these ones, yeah, the black soldier beetles, they were everywhere when I arrived, the same with the brown darkening beetles, or as Martin told me, honey brown beetles, because they look like dark honey, mm -hmm. and I was surprised, at first thought it's a leaf beetle, but when I tried to ID them, I realized it's a darkening beetle, I was very surprised, and they were just everywhere, and back home it's, it's not that usual that we have a mass occurrence of one single beetle species, or maybe the time is over in Germany because we are busy with poisoning everything and killing everything. Yeah, not very nice. Yeah. yeah, this is, these are from home. Yeah, the one, the cockchafer, the maybe is very popular. Yeah, as I said, earlier times they had these mass occurrence. But now it, they got very, very rare as a cockchafer because of DDT, because they poisoned them in big, big scale. But now they recover, and from time to time we have this mass occurrence again. And earlier times, very, very early, when there was no computer and no internet, the kids used to play with them, and to, they used to play with them because they were different color marks and they were called in different names as how, how, um, how much hair they had or not. So very interesting. Yeah, the rhinoceros beetle, I think I don't need to tell you anything about them. You have he them here as well. They're just <coughs> impressive, nice pet beetles. I think everybody likes them. Yeah. On these ones, they are quite common in, in Berlin because they like to develop in compost heaps. And we have a lot of gardens and a lot of compost. Quite common beetles. Very surprising for some people that they have such big beetles in town. Now, a nice slide about ladybirds or la ladybugs. The Australian one is a um, ladybug, ladybird. We also have them in Germany, but only in greenhouses and only as a pest control species. So they release them whenever they have problems with ladybugs. And I got very excited when I saw it the first time here in, in real wildlife. I've seen it back home in Germany, but it's not in, in, in the real wild. And the spotted umber ladybird, interesting, is the spotted umber ladybird is the name for Australia, otherwise it's called a variegated ladybird, and it's a species from Europe, and got introduced here, and it's very common. And I remember in, 10 years ago or so, there was a moth, and a moth infestation of this um, lady, um, sorry, ladybug um, species, and that's the first time I've seen it 10 years ago, and, but since then, I've never seen this mess again, only single ones, but it's very easy to recognize because it's small and flat and there's a characteristic pattern here. And the very most the most common species back home is the seven spotted lady bird and very common back home and everybody knows it. It's a symbol for luck. And there is a booth that you say that the, the number of points is the age of the lady but so how many points we have said that um, years years old and then you say no, it's, the points has to do with the species, not with the age. And mm -hmm. when it, we have the two point, uh, two spotted lady, but and then you would say, oh, it's the young one, and that one is the old one, no, no, different species. Yeah, any guys? 
So, now there is a surprise. Nobody could be, have been prepared for. The surprise is not, I want, to, I want to know from you what the speed is, and the surprise come, comes afterward. Does anybody know what the beetle is? It's the one I passed around. I hope anybody, somebody knows. I know it, but I don't need, know its name. Hmm. It's a dung beetle. It's not a dung beetle. That's related. Otherwise, if nobody has a clue, I can solve the question. Is it a cup taker? No, but from the same family, you related. Okay, I saw the question. Yeah, it's good. The African black beetle. It's an introduced pest in, here in Australia, and I got very excited when I found it here because, and now there's a surprise, my last part is not quite, we are almost done from, from this talk, it's a comparison with South Africa because I was home here ago, or last autumn, I was in South Africa, and there was everywhere the beetle, and I got excited when I saw it here again. So now I want to invite you to take a journey with me to South Africa, a very quick journey. And only insects, no, no boring big mammals, only exciting insects. My, my reason I was there, oh yeah, these are the dead ones. Yeah. My reason I was there actually, I got invited to a um, marriage, a marriage anniversary, and I thought, ah, if I take the, if they take the airport to get to South Africa, I want to use it for my study. So I, I did the internship, a nature conservation internship, and I could get some points, and luckily I, I knew a lecturer from the University of Cape Town who gave me an invitation for an internship, so I had something to show back home at uni. And, uni, and my aim was, um, I was collecting animals from a swimming pool, from the family who had the um, anniversary, and it was very exciting, the swimming pool. <laughs> and I don't want to go that much in detail, it's just a nice ladybird. Nice fly. And my question to you is, with Patella Flavestens, is it the global wanderer? Does it occur also around Melbourne, or is it too cold for it here? I know they are around. I know they are in Australia, but are they in, in Melbourne? Mm. You don't know. Mm. Or maybe wrong question. Maybe too difficult for the But this was one of my cool highlights. A very small rose chamber, but very very bright and very nice color. Yeah. Now, this is my most favorite insect in all South Africa, so I think the elephants can go home. I, I've never seen elephants, but <laughs> I think this is the most exciting insect. It's like the uh, beta from, from New Zealand, but I think also the beta can go home because the beta is very endangered and you have to search for it. And the pathum part mm. is just everywhere in, in okay or in Johannesburg, in some gardens, they have everywhere a very nice big um, cricket or no. Oh, I have, I have, I have to um, apologize to German slide because I used the slides from the <coughs> talk from my home uni, but just to entertain our German-speaking audience. <laughs> so, okay, I can say they are nocturnal and, and prepare, um, and especially after rain, they come out to hunt and they they eat everything and they have a passion for snails. So actually, they are not a pest species, they are beneficial for your garden. And these males, they have these strange, strange tusks and they fight with them about the, for the females. And they have a very, very stinky liquid they will squeeze on your hand when you grab them too heavy. And the name Parkton prawn is very funny. Parkton is the name of the suburb from Johannesburg. And prawn, once because they look like a prawn, they are big and red, it doesn't not look really like a cricket. And the other one is you see the swimming pool and they like to drown in swimming pool. That's why they are called prawns. Because you mostly see them dead in swimming pools. But it's very nice. And the family they were very surprised that they have these insects in their garden. They didn't know. Yeah, this is a termite. Yeah, I, I mentioned it. I got very excited the one night when there was a swarm night and we saw all the wings lying around because back home in Germany you don't have termites because of the climate climatic restrictions. We also don't have um, sulipoops or scorpions. So we I stay in a poor country. No, no. Wow, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not that exciting in Germany sometimes. 
But it, one of the very exciting things I always wanted to see is the tandem walk. They, they do it when queen and king, when they found each other, they do a tandem walk together to found the, the colony together. It was very exciting to see that. And because I saw the, that one, uh, these are oil termites, because I saw ah, many people eat termites, so I should try them as well. And they were not that bad, though. I could recommend them. Yeah. And the species was, yeah. And the other big insights I have, I have with the termites in South Africa was when we are in university or not in school, but in university, you are taught that termites play a big role with biomass probation and biomass. Uh, I'm making the word, but yeah, with the nutrient cyclus and that they can eat a lot of vegetable matter. But when, when you see the harvester termites, how they connect, a big amount of grass or dead that plant, but in a very short time, now, there I understood it, I just wanted to say, it's much more, um, um, you learn much more when you see the insects, instead of listening about them all. Uh, sorry for my, for my enemy, I have to take my head. You learn much more in nature than in a, in a lecture or in a class, that's what I wanted to say. If you are out here, there much more of it. So, it's my, always, we are almost done. Um, only two or three slides left, but this is my main, main, um, what do you want to say? This is my main motto or my main phrase in, in my life, it's fascination of the daily life. So many people are hunting for the special things and they only want to see the jewels or only want to see the lyre birds or only want to see something special and they ignore the daily stuff because the daily stuff is boring for them. And I think it's opposite because if you, only if you take care of the daily stuff you see the jewels, otherwise you will miss them. So, and these are the three interesting animals from South Africa. The one is a, is a pig wilder bug. If they sting on this pig, they will wilt. And so the gardeners got very ex and upset them, but I like them. Very nice pig bugs and very enjoyable. You can see them anytime. Or also with the platanas. Oh, oh sorry. With the platanas. They're nice, nice frogs and they, they stay in the fountain in, in, in Botanical garden in Spain, but I was very surprised that they have frogs and fountains. You don't have it in Germany. And also with the chameleons. I was very surprised when I was in Spanish visiting one of my friends and he said, Oh, all my lectures, it starts in 10 minutes, we have to check for chameleons on that truck. Well, I was very excited that he managed in 10 minutes to find a chameleon for me. And I just wanted to say that. Um, even many people are complaining about the possums or, what, or about the corvallas or cockatoos, they are screeching so loud and making a mess. Why you don't appreciate the animals? Why you don't respect them? They are only a poor in Australia, nowhere else. And even out South Africa, many people are complaining about their birds. Why they don't respect them? I mean, they are, they are just really species. I made this, okay. Now I need to annoy you with something very last and something else. I'm very sorry for that, but I have to do it because I started with acknowledging the original people and I wanted to acknowledge someone else. So yeah, now you think I was in South Africa only for hunting insects. No, I was hunting also for signatures and autographs. Because I don't know why I have a big passion for this kind of music. Yeah, Josef asked me this, this, um, this, um, Morning or no? This afternoon. What is Farmo? I was very surprised. Actually, it's a Basoto music. It's called Farmo. And it's accordion music. Very strange music, very strange singing. But I'm addicted to it. And I just wanted to mention four things. One thing is, when you... Also, it has something to do with my, with my view of life. Very strange. When you believe in something and you really want that, that's going to happen. I was very surprised, but... One thing is, I was searching five years for that album book. They say so special, and I annoyed the people on Facebook, and nobody knew them. And then, fortunately, I managed to, to meet him, and then he said, told me that to me, I was over the moon, I was very happy. The other one is, with my Mapitzing, Mapitzing number six, is as old as me. I'm very proud of that album, and I'm very proud that I met that guy, but I really wanted to meet him, and I didn't know how, but very gentleman, I'm very happy that I met him. I don't know why, but I'm very proud. And the other two things is, um, I just 
for the say, condolence to Sebo Madela. He was a young man in my age, but unfortunately he got shot because he was a very, very good singer, had done very good music, but someone got jealous and then he shot him. Not nice. And the other thing is, I was very surprised that they appeared on the cover. I would never have expected that, that they would photograph me for a cover, and they even asked me if I want to say something on that album. I would ne never expected that I appear on a Pavo album one day, but I especially not with that lady, who's a little thema, it's maybe a comparison to Wall Pavos. Yeah, Wall Pavos was the guy with the kangaroo movie, no? Kangaroo. Oh. So yeah, it was similar, who's a little thema, everybody knows from the Basoto and would never thought that I would appear on an album with them. Usually I don't like breaking, I have to admit, but in this case I have to break because it's something very, very strange. So, I'm almost done. The last slide is an acknowledgement slide, but now it's, a quick, now it's a question to you. There is an animal on that slide. It's not an insect, but I think it's the most exciting animal from all Australia. Marissa is not allowed to answer. Um, I want you to, I want you to tell me which animal it could be because I think if you have not seen kangaroo, kangaroo doesn't matter. If you have not seen koala, it does not matter. But if you have not seen that animal, you can't say you have been in Australia. Which animal it could be? Any guess? It's a very common animal, very popular. Everybody likes it. And I'm sure you, you love it, especially as entomologists. Wombat. Yeah. Hmm? Wombat. Not wombat, no. Okay, give him it's a bird. It's a big, big bird. Emu. Not Which emu. Cassowary. Not cassowary. Why? No. Waste No. No. Very common. It's even around town. Magpie? No, not magpie. No. 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 Likes insects too much. Really back No, not really back It's a big bird. Big cockatoo? No, cockatoos are vegetarians. <laughs> okay, I solved it. It's too too difficult. Tawny oh. 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 I have a big obsession with them. I don't know why because these things are bright yellow. Okay, I finished the part. One of our members has one in his garden. What? One of our members has one in his garden. He's mm. not here tonight. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, they're Thanks for your patience. Any questions so far? <laughs> Maybe you are too, too tired now. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Otherwise, I also want to thank, yeah. for, thank my parents, Aspen and Alexander Weber, for their patience they had with me here. Oh. You all know when you, are, when you are in love with insects and you have to cope with your family, it's not always that easy. <laughs> <laughs> but then he has to go with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks, it's done. Um, yeah, the, the slides will find later on my blog. I think you just need to remember Australia, yeah. And then you find it. If you Google Australia, you find my blog. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Mike, I need you to, um, to load mine. I think it's still open.